The Temple Wars are a massive event within the Star Trek universe that has hardly been seen on screen. But what was it, and what were the consequences? In this episode of Star Trek Explained, we'll break down the time-spanning events of the Temple Wars and see how it all connects across the Star Trek universe. While mostly seen in Star Trek Enterprise, it is impressive how the events cause damage across time. The name Temple Wars somewhat suggests that, even more so when we explore the Temple Cold War. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack, and if you love Star Trek, hit that subscribe button to never miss a video. Make it so. The Temple Cold War, and subsequently the Temple War, was introduced in Star Trek Enterprise, and funnily enough, the only series to mention these wars despite being the earliest in the timeline, due to the fact it was the latest to come out at the time. In saying that, we recently had a small reference in Star Trek Discovery, and with its recent season, Star Trek Strange New Worlds has touched upon the Temple Wars in an alternate timeline, but still a consequence of the Temple Cold War. Somewhat confusing, I know, but stick with us. In today's video, we'll be compiling all this information and looking at what truly were the Temple Wars from the information we know so far. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. Proceeding with Temple War was a period known as the Temple Cold War, in which several factions from different points in time tried to alter the timeline to their benefit. Factions did indeed fight against each other during this period, though this was the case, it seems that mostly singular operatives were trying to stop a faction's plans from happening in the first place such as Temple Agent Daniels for the Federation, or Silic for the Suliban Cabal. But talking these factions, who do we know was involved in this Cold War? The United Federation plans operated during the Temple Cold War in the 30th and 31st centuries, with Temple Agents such as Daniels who tried to protect the Temple Accords. The Federation also seemingly utilised Time Soldiers alongside their Time Agents. One such time soldier was known as Lieutenant Commander Yor, a 24th century Beetlejuicean who originated from the Kelvin timeline, a timeline that was caused by Spock and a rogue Romulan called Nero. Now it's worth noting that the United Federation planets did have time travel capabilities in the 29th century, with ships such as the Wells-class starship US Relativity and the model HB-88 Federation Aeon. These ships and the officers aboard would monitor the timeline and attempt to fix any issues that may have, or will have, or had already occurred. Time travel. Whether the 29th century United Federation planets took part in the Temple Cold War and the war, or just left it to their 30th and 31st century counterparts, is unknown. It's a little bit confusing. One faction was a mysterious benefactor who utilised the Suliban Cabal as their proxy. They operated in the 28th century and could only send messages through time and couldn't physically time travel. Many theories have raged around who this unknown individual is or who they might have been. While it's never been confirmed in canon, i.e. on screen, some believe this individual was a Romulan from a future trying to change the history of the Federation. However, some also think it was Jonathan Archer trying to correct the timeline. Who do you think it was? Numerous proxies were used during the Temple Cold War, such as the aforementioned Suliban Cabal. The Nakal were another faction of the Temple Wars, and were a group from the 29th century that opposed the Temple Accords and were responsible for escalating the Cold War into the Temple War. They went back to Earth during World War II and allied themselves with the Nazis, giving them advanced weaponry to win the war and prevent the Federation from forming. The Sphere Builders can be considered part of the Temple Cold War, as they were able to examine possible futures in the timeline and act as the ultimate in their favour. They made use of the Zindi species to further their goals and ultimately prevent the Federation from being created as well. Their overall goal was to convert space into one they could inhabit, as they were transdimensional beings that could not exist in normal space. This led them into conflict with the Federation. In one possible timeline, they fought against the Federation at the Battle of Procyon V in the 26th century, with the Federation flagship at the time was the oh so beautiful USS Enterprise J. These are the only factions we know of at the minute, however these factions earlier time travellers such as Starfleet's Temple Fleet from the 29th century with the US's relativity work into the Temple Wars we don't really know, it's a bit confusing. Starfleet first became the Temple Cold War when a mysterious benefactor of the Suliban Cabal was attempting to destabilise the Klingon Empire, using a Cabal to plan attacks within the Empire and make it look like the Klingon houses were attacking each other. The efforts of Captain Archer and the Kuvi NX-1 Enterprise foiled this plan. The 22nd century was the main front of the Temple Cold War, as it was a time of major impact on the future centuries. 
the Suleban Cabal would continue to affect the mission of the NX-01 Enterprise on numerous occurrences, once even trying to grind a mission by framing the Enterprise for destroying a mining colony. However, this was eventually discovered and the Enterprise's ongoing mission continued. The Enterprise would later locate a temple ship from the 31st century and would involve a freeway standoff between themselves, the Fodian Assembly and the Suleban Cabal, who both wanted the ship for their technological advancement. The ship would be reactivated and sent back to its original time. The Tholians have been involved in temporal engagements, such as with the US is defined in the 23rd century and using an interphasic rift to send it back in time to an alternate universe. Whether the Tholians can be considered a faction during the Cold War because of this is yet to be known, but considering they were trying to gain access to 31st century time travel tech and went far beyond their borders to do so, they could be considered a faction in my opinion. One of the biggest events of the Temple Cold War was the Zindi Incident, where the Spear Builders, a transdimensional race, used the Zindi race as their proxy to destroy Earth and therefore prevent the Federation from being formed. The NX-1 Enterprise would eventually turn the Zindi against the Spear Builders who had manipulated them and put a stop to the Spear Builders' plan to reshape space for their invasion. Those events we know of took place during the Temple Cold War, but how did the Cold War heat up into a full-blown conflict? The answer is the Nakal. The Nakal would feed at the end of the Temple War but managed to escape using stealth time travel technology, and their escape allowed them to start the Temple War. That sounds complicated, right? Almost like a paradox event, but not really. They had escaped to 1944 Earth during World War II and had to use Nazi Germany to create a Temple Conduit, which allowed them to return to their own time, kill all of the Federation Temple agents, which had turned that already Temple Cold War into the Temple War. Captain Jonathan Archer, with the assistance of Temple Agent Daniels, managed to stop the Nicole from starting the Temple War, which ended the Temple War. Way, that makes sense, doesn't it? I do agree with Captain Jamin when she said, The future is the past, the past is the future, it all gives me a headache. Hold on. Honestly, writing a script, whew. The Nicole incident is the main and only incident we do know about in the Temple War, but we do know of a couple of other details. During the Temple War, the Garden of Forever, a portal which allowed those who passed through it to travel in time, was exploited by numerous factions during this war, allowing them to use the Guardian to go back in time and kill people from the timelines to favour them. This caused the Garden of Forever to move from its previously unknown location, which was seen in the original series, to the planet of Darnus V near the Gamma Quadrant border, where it would later be found in the year 3189 by the crew of the USS Discovery. The Guardian hid in disguise as an odd man named Carl, who would test visitors to see if they were worthy of its power and having been exploited previously. Before and during the Temple War, a vast number of member wars were brought into the Federation. This was very similar to what happened during the Dominion War, when protectorates under the Federation were vastly increased. Such a world that was quickly made into the Federation during the Dominion War was Avora, which had only achieved warp travel a year before being given protectorate status. This increase in member worlds caused the Federation and its government structures to become too unyielding. This caused many problems, with smaller member worlds not being resolved. In contrast, the oldest member worlds were able to get issues resolved quickly, which was a similar issue the Federation faced during the Dominion War. At the end of the Temple War, as you would expect, the Federation and many of its worlds were devastated. Many worlds were cut off in communication with the rest of the Federation, and were only reconnected many years later. This caused many calamities on Federation worlds, from civil wars to outright hatred of Federation for leaving the worlds alone for too long. As a result of the massive damage inflicted by the use of time travel and the Temple Wars, the use of time travel was made illegal and all Temple technology was destroyed in legislation called the Temple Accords. The Carl Federation member world, as well as the vast increase in member states and the protectorates within the Federation, caused numerous cracks in the trust and faith within the Greater Galactic Faction. These cracks would not be healed, as the Federation would then have to push its member states into finding alternatives for its dwindling supply of dilithium. By the year 3069, the burn occurred, in which dilithium suddenly went inert and all active warp cores detonated. This was the final straw which broke faith in the Federation and its ideals, which led to its near collapse, where it would return its former glory for the next century. As you can expect from the concept of Temple Wars, this had actually had the potential to create alternative timelines. It actually did. We know of people crossing his timelines due to the Temple incursions or was jumping between the Prime Universe and the Kelvin Universe. It gets a bit confusing here, so stick with us the best you can. Ultimately, the Temple War allows the stories to be told anywhere in the Star Trek Universe timeline. For example, the MMORPG of Star Trek Online actually makes use of a Temple War for an expansion named Agents of Yesterday. Cool name. 
This expansion explores the idea that during the War of the Iconians, the Allied powers accidentally play a part in the cause of a Temple Cold War. Using attempts of a Kremen weapon ship, this ship was a very similar to one seen in Star Trek Voyager's Year of Hell. The use of the ship accidentally changed the fate of a species known as the Tatarians, who would become the Sphere Builders. This created an alliance between the Sphere Builders, the Nakal, the Kremen, and the Vorgons, who would go on to participate in the Battle of Procyon V against the Federation and its allies. The players who started to go online had to work with Time Agent Daniels to play a key role in resolving the battle. One alternative timeline caused by the Temple War was caused by Romulan Temple agents, who tried to kill a child Khan Noonien Singh to stop him from rising power to stop the World War III and the eugenics wars from happening, which would stop a strong united Earth from rising from the ashes, which would eventually become the United Federation of Planets. The timeline would still have an Enterprise in the 23rd century, but as a United Earth fleet ship Enterprise, captained by James T. Kirk, much earlier than his prime timeline counterpart. The Federation wouldn't have been formed, and the Vulcans would be facing defeat at the hands of the Romulan Star Empire. This alternate time was luckily stopped from happening by La'a Nunez Singh and the sacrifice of the alternate timeline, James T. Kirk. Maybe he's a vampire. And that is all we really know about the Temple War and its consequences for now, but we hope to hear more of this interesting galactic event and what truly happened throughout it. As a Temple War, there are limitless stories that could possibly be told, with alternate timeline and time travel shenanigans a plenty. What would you like to see if we saw the Temple War on screen? Let us know in the comment section below. I really would like to see a modern time ship, that would be cool. If you want to keep up to date on the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join the community Discord server. For now, I've been Captain Jack, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper my friends, goodbye.